Welcome to Tampa Home Talk with your host, native Tampa real estate girl, Katrina Madewell, a full-time, passionate, out-of-the-box thinker, love for home ownership kind of realtor with over 21 years of combined mortgage and real estate experience. Tune in every week at this time for expert advice on everything you need to know about home ownership, finance, maintaining great credit, building wealth, and making your everyday life better, and how you can be financially successful successful today and tomorrow. Remember, love where you live or let Katrina fix it. Now, here's your host of Tampa Home Talk, Katrina Madewell. Good afternoon. This is Katrina Madewell on the Real Estate Radio Network. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for Tampa Home Talk. Really excited to have a great show lined up for you today. We have modern design and remodel trends, and we're going to talk about some of those things that will bring you the highest dollar when you get ready to sell your property. And of course, that's what all of our sellers want. Our guest today in studio, really excited to announce our guest. It's Felix Menendez with Famous Tate. He's the director of a account development. He's been with Famous Tate for 10 years. He is also on the Tampa Bay Builders Association. He's a chair. He's also on the Remodelers Council as a chair also. Some great organizations within the Tampa Bay area. Brings a bunch of knowledge, a bunch of resources, and we had a great time chatting before the show, and I I can't wait to bring today's show. Welcome to the show, Felix. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Really, really glad to have you. So we'll, we'll start with a question that we get all the time, right? I have a seller I told you I had to take to sign her paperwork this morning. She's actually pre-signing for her close of escrow tomorrow. And we did similar things in her house. So one of the things that I always tell people, and, and I've got another listing I can think of right now, not on the market yet, getting ready. Everything's redone except for one bathroom. So that's a lot of times where I'm going to bring a lot of value where I come in and say, hey, you know, the kitchens and the values, the, the bathrooms are really what help sell houses. And so what I, what I experience when I go out and I'm looking at properties, even with a buyer, and the house looks fantastic. The kitchen's been redone. The bathroom's been redone. And the next thing you know, there's just one bathroom that's just not finished or one little area. And the buyers go, wow, it looks great. But there's just, they just didn't go all the way. It's like they just didn't finish. Uh, you know, one of the things that we try to offer is we try to partner with real estate professionals and offer products that are that are quick fix solutions. Um, we do outdoor kitchens. We do indoor kitchens. We do um several different product categories so if you have a home and you're showing it and everything's perfect they love the brand new cabinets they love the flooring but wow that kitchen those appliances are really dated you can give me a call we can take a look at it we have certain products that we have set aside at great prices that we can say look this can let you plug a hole you can get a refrigerator for this you can get a new range for this don't let that be a obstacle towards purchasing the house and you you actually have a special for our show listeners right so if anyone's listening to tampa home talk this afternoon or you're catching us on a podcast just simply mention tampa home talk and we're going to post uh, felix menendez's information on our website which is tampahometalk.com you'll be able to reach out to him directly and mention the show special which is four appliance package for 2000 is that right uh, it'd be 2049 it'd be 2049 dollars okay. and it'd be a four-piece stainless steel package with an electric for self-cleaning range a stainless steel side-by-side refrigerator with a water dispenser and ice dispenser a dishwasher and an over-the-range microwave so nice stuff i mean i can tell you we've had to buy appliances like you know refrigerators and stuff sure. when people move out whatever myself and the other agent end up splitting it that could be two thousand dollars right there well it could be and it's you know it's good peace of mind to say look i can move forward with this house i like the kitchen i just want to change out the appliances and we've got a program there we also have some other pricing programs that we can do if if you do happen to give us a call and let us know that uh, you heard about us on the show yeah, so you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. We're going to have a bunch of fantastic information to cover today. So if you miss any part of our show, don't forget you can catch it in its entirety via a podcast or you can catch it at tampahometalk.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for Tampa Home Talk. And our off air number is 813. 813- 377-2775. So if you heard something on the show or you have a question, you can call us or text us at 813-377-2775. Again, that off-air number, 813-377-2775. We'll be happy to connect you with Felix at Famous Tate or any of our other amazing guests. So let's talk about stainless steel since we're on topic. Like, okay. it, it, And you get this question a lot because you put it on your, your FAQs. And what's your opinion? You think stainless steel appliances are going to be staying around for a while? I think it's going to stay around. I, I, that's one of the questions that we hear most frequently is, is customers will come up to us at home shows or in our retail locations and they'll ask us, um, you know, we're going to redo our kitchen. Should we be looking at stainless steel? Has stainless steel sort of run its course? 
Um, stainless steel sort of peaked around 2008 as far as the volume so, of sales. So I was trying to think like when it started really re-entering the market because everything was white for a while. Remember with the 90s, everything, the white cabinets, the we white did. appliances. And and we, we, I guess what happened was was stainless steel is very much inspired by commercial kitchens, restaurant kitchens. If you ever go to Burns and you take the um, the backstage tour, you'll see the appliances that they're cooking on in there. And that really came from like Vulcan Ranges and some of the commercial products. A lot of culinary schools, they that's what the products are are um, are designed to look like. So the manufacturers accommodated people and and, des- and designed products to match that lifestyle. Stainless steel, I believe, will stay around as a as a color, as a mainstay color, like a black or a white, because people are always going to want to recreate that that experience at home. So it may not hit, it may not be the the volume of sale that it's been in the past, but it will remain an option. So don't be scared off of redoing your kitchen stainless. There will be stainless dishwashers for right. twenty five years. I think so too. I think it just it's a nice look when you put in the stainless, like even though it's been around for a while. And I've noticed we actually have a listing too that even has like a mosaic backsplash even with some stainless in it we're noticing countertops even going in the stainless type thing you know sometimes it can be too much right if you have all these stainless steel appliances and sure. tops but you know you could maybe say if you want white or something different or even the ones that are built in that look like the cabinets and then if you have a stainless steel countertop it's going to give it a nice different well, yeah. look sanitary look sure absolutely and and i think that when as as it relates to to real estate when you're making your appliance choices and you're, you're bringing a house uh, with the idea that, you know what, we're going to sell it in a few years, you may want to use caution from doing anything that's too trendy or too out there. You may really so like give, a... give an example when you say too trendy, too sure. out there. Like we all think about the 1970s avocado, but what's sure. a modern day example of that? Manufacturers are offering a lot of neat colors right now beyond the standard black, white, stainless. Uh, some of the listeners may have bisque appliances or biscuit appliances, which is an off-white sort of uh, light almond color that was very popular for a while but is now uh, kind of in decline. Um, but some of the manufacturers, particularly the premium manufacturers, are, are offering multiple colors in reds and blues and greens and different um, designer-type colors. That's a fantastic purchase, and that would really highlight your kitchen to have that. But you I've have, seen some that were in red. Actually, I sold sure. a house not too long ago with red quartz countertops, mm-hmm. if you can believe that. Yeah. And I, I had to tell my seller, the people that come in here, they're either going to love this or they're going to hate it. It's not a whole lot of in between. And you're trying to cast a wide enough net that you're going to appeal to as many people as possible. And if, if you if you go with something that's very specific that you really like with the intention of selling this in a year or two, you may find that you're eliminating a large number of your of your potential buyers because I don't like the way that looks. I don't like that red that red backsplash. I don't like that uh, um, quartz countertop or whatnot. So. A lot of it, if you get, like you say, too specific, it'd be a little too ter- too trendy, not only to date itself, but it can be too specific for a broader range. And I think sometimes people don't think that when they're putting that kind of money into their house, because it's pretty rare that they would do that kind of stuff with the intention to sell it. And that's usually sure. after we make that recommendation or something like that. So w- while we're on topic, you know, there's sure. always a holiday right around the corner. Mm-hmm. But when, so- when are some of the best times to buy an appliance? Because don't manufacturers dictate some of that? They do. The manufacturer really goes above and beyond to create these these selling opportunities for us and for other retailers. Um, in years past, you would tell people, you know, it's always a good time to come in and buy. There's a couple of, of um, holidays per year, and and I do tell you know my customers and and uh, and others that. Um, you know, if you're ready to do your kitchen, come in and see us. We'll work something with you. But if you're looking to replace a, a washing machine and you've got lead time or a dishwasher, you may really want to focus in on some of these holiday events. It seems like almost every month there's a a, a Columbus Day event or a Memorial Day event. And you're Labor Day. There's Labor always Day. something. Sure. And, and by really focusing in on those dates, you see some really great pricing opportunities for for your for your clients and um now how are those like for example black friday does that mm-hmm. play a role in where your prices are like would you normally see better prices around black friday than you might on labor day I, you know i can't speak to that because it hasn't been my experience that that black friday is is the best time of the year to buy appliances mm-hmm. it's a good time it is a good time but the 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 reason the prices are are reduced around black friday is they're trying to get us into malls and get us into stores that have other opportunities for laptops and, and tablets and toys and other things so in order to get the appliance departments involved they'll offer some great pricing at that time but 
really, there's no need for you to wait. Now, Black Friday is a great time to buy a Blu-ray player or a TV, which we don't right. sell, but uh, <laughs> right. or some Tiffany earrings, but not necessarily the the absolute greatest time. It'll be a good time, and you'll save some money, but don't limit yourself or wait for that day after Thanksgiving. You can get a great deal all, all year long. So if you had to give me that number one holiday that you think the manufacturers are going to give the biggest incentives, the stores are going to push the best, any idea, or does that change from one year to the next? It changes by, by buying period. It changes by year, and... And, and one thing you can I would count imagine on, sales too, right? Depending on how their sales are for the year so far. I think that has a lot to do with it. If there's a lot of stuff in the warehouse, then they're going to be more obligated to, to push that product through. And and so just keep watching your ads, keep looking at your at your um, your uh, newspapers, radio, and and get an opportunity to to get, redo your kitchen when it's when it's the right time. So what do you find that a lot of times because we've talked about this also, and I'm sure you get the question too. The old appliances, and we'll see stuff in homes that were built like 1950, and it's this old sure. like in the wall oven, and this sucker is still kicking, and it's just still freaking works even without maintenance. And the appliances today, they do a lot of fancier things and they're nicer and they look better and all that stuff but it seems like they just don't last as long so what's your thought like if the if the refrigerator goes kaput is it likely you think those other appliances will follow I think that that we get as many customers come in to see me to say I'm replacing a 40 year old washing machine as they are a 15 year washing machine I think that that sometimes people's uh, preconceptions are that well I want this to last as long as my last one did that's not a, a a realistic uh, assertion. I, I, it's just uh, uh, the reason why is that the manufacturers realized that when they were selling customers something once every 40 years that they weren't selling, it wasn't a lot of repeat business. Right. So, and also too, you can still find refrigerators for four ninety nine. You could find refrigerators for four ninety nine in 1974. So, whereas a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk has appreciated with inflation, you're still seeing four ninety nine electric ranges. And, and now, having said that, the range you get for four ninety nine today is not going to be nearly as featured as the one that was made in 1974. That was pretty top of the line then. But the pro- price categories have stayed very similar. Um, and that's a that's sort of a, a consideration to have. You Your products, will you, I think that if your refrigerator dies in 15 years, I think that your range in dishwasher won't be far behind. Gotcha. Well, just because I'm sure you get that question, well, if, I'm, if I have white and I'm changing to stainless, should I change all of them at once or should I change just that one and that type of stuff? So when we come back in just a minute, we're going to take a very quick break, but I am going to put our guest in the spot a little bit and ask him which appliances he thinks are the best and talk about why they're unique and what makes them a little bit different so you can have a little bit of food for thought the next time you go out to repurchase any of those appliances. And we'll just talk about some of the things that make them different, and I'm sure brand loyalty has a lot to do with that too. We'll be back here on Tampa Home Talk in just a few minutes. Stick around. We've got some fantastic stuff coming your way. Hi, this is Melissa Rogers, owner of SEC Inspection Services, where we offer full inspections and insurance inspections. Give us a call at 727-786-4663 or visit us on the web at secinspection.com. Welcome back to our fantastic show today on Tampa Home Talk with regards to modern design, trends for appliances, remodeling that type of stuff, and more. Our guest today in the studio is Felix Menendez with Famous Tate. He's been there for over 10 years, has a good handle on this stuff because he's involved in some local communities. He's the chair in the Tampa Bay Builders Association and the Remodelers Association, Remodelers Council. I had that wrong. Um, so he's got a very, very good handle on this stuff. He's in in it with the trenches basically with these people every day so he has an idea on what's current what's new what's hip so if you missed any part of today's show here on tampa home talk you can catch it in its entirety just go to tampahometalk.com it's also available on a podcast and we are across the web just search for us on facebook and twitter at tampa home talk Earlier part of the show, we were talking about stainless steel appliances, what made them popular, why they were around, how long we think they're going to stick around and more. And we left off the conversation talking about what's unique um, to each brand and is one brand better over another? How do you answer that when you get that question on a daily basis? It's a common question. We get it a lot from from our builder customers. We get it a lot from our retail customers. Um, Who makes the best dishwasher? 
Come on, you could tell me. Come on, Felix. Who's the best washing machine? I'm gonna buy. A, I'm gonna buy one anyway. Just tell me which is the one to get. Well, Bosch. How much is that? I mean, <laughs> well, we, and and, and you the know, more you pay for it, the longer it might last, right? You know what we do? We do stand behind that idea. I, it, it, appliances seems to be one of the the categories in life that you do really do get what you pay for. We I, we have found that just through our our relationships with the service companies and with the installation guys that a better a, a usually a better built pro, pro, product does tend to cost more. And so keep that in mind. Now, having said that, you don't need to buy a $10,000 refrigerator to keep your juice boxes cold like I right. do with my kids. Um, you can have a fine product. But when you when making that decision, just realize that if you if you tend to skimp out a little bit, your your performance may vary. So, Do you see a whole lot of stuff being repaired in this day and age? Or is it kind of like with printers where nobody really mm-hmm. fixes them and they're almost disposable? And by the time you get done fixing it, it's cheaper to buy a new one. Well, I think part of it has to do with warranty. I think that that with major appliances, almost every major appliance we carry comes with a one year limited warranty, and we say it just like that. It's a one year limited warranty. There are there are limitations and exclusions that apply, but for the most part, if the man, if the manufacturer uh, builds that product with some kind of error that's at their fault, they're going to fix it for you. If the heating element goes out, what would some of those limitations be? Just for mm-hmm. example. Um, anything that has to do that they can recognize as abuse. Okay. Uh, um, if you stand on the oven door and it's bent and it doesn't gotcha. close properly, they're not gonna they're not gonna cover that. Um, so, so if it's like workmanship or something to do with the way it was built, they're likely gonna cover that. They're gonna cover any sort of factory defect for the most part that has to de- that works with the inter- with the production of the product. So if a heating element goes out, if a electrical board is out, now what they're not gonna cover is something that's a result of. Um, I'll give you an example. You're a Tampa girl. I'm from Tampa. Right. Um, You're a Lato guy. I I graduated from Chamberlain. I I love it when I have my natives in studio. (laughs) So, you know, one of the things that we get here in the summer is a lot of rain, a lot of lightning. And a lot of the communities that we're delivering into are are St. Petersburg, South Tampa, um, Hyde Park. These are areas that have houses that are established. The wiring is older. You get a lot of power surges, a lot of lightning strikes. And if a surge goes into your house, like your TV or your Blu-ray player or your refrigerator, the extended warranty, or excuse me, the manufacturer's warranty is not going to cover that. Now, certain manu- certain retailers like ourselves offer extended warranties. If you take advantage of our extended warranty, it does cover power surge. It covers lightning strikes. So let does it me cover ma- a lot of the stuff that the manufacturer's warranty might not? It goes above and beyond. And, and if, if you buy a three-year warranty from us, it's going to cover everything that the manufacturer covers the first year. In addition to that, it's going to cover pretty much uh, edge to edge, so anything that could go wrong. Again, things like abuse and, and actual, there are some exclusions, but for the most part, if your range stops working, they're going to get it fixed for you or, or replace it. You know, we see a lot, and I'm curious to know, so I have to ask this question okay. because even on the home warranties that people get after mm-hmm. the fact of existing homes, the ice makers, it, they charge an upcharge. There's even an extra line item on there. I think it's like 40 bucks to cover the ice maker for a year because that's always something that breaks. Why is that? Do you know? I think anything that works with electricity and water tends to be more problematic than something that, that like a dryer that you plug in and it all it does is generate hot air. Um, a refrigerator is a, is a complicated machine. It runs from the time you plug it in, it never shuts off. It, it runs. That's why we tell people when you're moving, well, I'm going to take my refrigerator with me. Well, you be, be conscious of the fact that, that refrigerator has been running for seven years nonstop without a break. When you go to transport that in the back of, of your brother-in-law's pickup truck across town and plug that in, it may not come back on. When it may you give it a break, up. it might not want to come it, back to work. <laughs> it may call it a career. And and so that's something to just be a, be aware of. Um, but, yeah, ice makers do tend to be something that um, – that is more problematic. Uh, is that covered under the warranties? The warrant, the ice maker on a, for example, a side by side refrigerator. Yeah. If it's a, a factory built ice maker, it's covered along with it, um, and it would be covered. You know, through again, I don't want to turn this into a. Um, you have to buy an extended warranty, but if you buy the manufacturer's warranty, curious. you're covered that first year. Yeah, it's really a curious question because it's something we probably see in, I would say, at least two or three out of ten houses. Yeah. And I, there's a lot of side by sides out there that are running just fine that have ice maker. Oh, it hasn't worked in five years. It could be something as simple though as as maintenance. I mean, it could be something where the line could be clogged or pinched and water's not coming in, um, or it could be something as simple as just changing your filter. Almost all these refrigerators have filters now that filter out. So it keeps um, your water nice and clean. And they get all the zinc and all of the the chemicals that are in the water. You know, one somebody was telling me the other day that um, you know an advantage to these water filters, even like a Brita filter that mm-hmm. you have in your sink. People throw a lot of pharmaceuticals away. They flush it down the toilet. They throw it away in the garbage, and it gets into the groundwater. And some of these models have have um, the ability to filter out the that from your drinking water. I mean, that's a that's a plus. 
That is definitely sounds like something someone should Google and like spend a little bit of time researching sure. that. <laughs> I see Chris eyeing his water there back there. <laughs> so what's what makes some of these um, brands unique over another one? Like what's something like if you can you think of anything specific when it comes to like refrigerators or or dishwashers or ovens that makes it really really unique? It's tough to, to point out at a brand and say, hey, those guys make everything great. Everybody, we carry, we could carry over 45 brands in a, in a famous Tate location, and there's nine of them. And not every famous Tate has all 45 brands, but they carry the, they all carry the same core merchandise. You That's may, a, I didn't even realize there were 45 brands of refrigerators. Well, you know, we're also a bedding company, and we, we sell mattresses. We also sell um, outdoor kitchen products like grills and outdoor refrigerators. So um, there are a lot of, of product categories. But our, the main bulk of our business is, is the major appliance. Um, so having said that, it's tough to – I get that question a lot, you know, is um, what, what, if I'm going to buy one brand, what should I buy? The truth of the matter is, at that price point, all that stuff is pretty good. Right. It, it, and, and we selfishly, as a, as a, um, as a company – we're very conscious of the fact that when we sell you something, we don't just sell it and, and our employees go over to the paint department or go over to sell dry wood or, or wood yeah. or, or whatever. We're, we're your partner. So when that gets delivered, we may be selling you a washer and dryer today, but you may need a, a refrigerator tomorrow or you may come and get a Christmas present and buy a wine cooler for somebody you know, in the holidays. I think customer service is huge and more and more companies, they're either getting that or they're not. And I think the ones that are not getting it are the ones that all slowly fade away and eventually just be out of business. So what? I know we're talking about stainless steel appliances, but I'm mm-hmm. curious, how often would you say that stuff changes? Like, the, like is it every decade, every couple decades, like the trends start to change? Well, right now, it's like 15 years. I'm just trying to think in my head. It seems to be like like that we go through periods of of a lot of diversity and then a lot of sameness. You know, in the 90s, there was a big boom for the stainless steel appliances that that suddenly took off and and, and became the uh, product to own. Now, interestingly enough, not everyone could afford that then. There were not a lot of 1999 stainless steel kitchen package. There were not a lot of $400 stainless steel dishwashers, and so that was I a, that kind of came with the turn of the millennium. You know. Well, we're, we're seeing what we're seeing now is that those same customers that wanted to recreate that that culinary school experience at home are saying, okay, what else you got? So one of the, and, and I think that part of that's come with the to, with, the, with Maybe coincidentally with the turn of the millennium, but I think also with the economic downturn, is that you saw people that were doing really premium kitchens that maybe weren't didn't want to be so in your face when their guests came over and gotcha. they were struggling and maybe you know didn't have a job and and so you so what we were seeing is a lot of tastes have changed. We're we're seeing a lot more customers coming in that want to put wood panels on. Less on is bills. more. Mm-hmm. And where, there was a whole write up the other day. I'm trying to think where I saw it at. It was forwarded on by someone that uh, works at NAR, which is National Association of Realtors. Yeah, no really younger guy, very much insight, and he um, he was talking about basically the tr- like the trend is less is more. People are buying smaller houses. They're basically just they're going back to a lot of the basics, like you mentioned. So when you talk about induction cooking, what's induction cooking? Induction cooking is a. a- a pro type of cooking, a, it's type of electric cooktop or range that has come, that has become very popular in the last three or four years. Induction cooking simply is is a magnet that's using a that's generating a heat directly on the pan. So typically, an electric range or a coil top range, the burner would get hot, it would heat the pan, the pan cooks the food. Mm-hmm. What we're doing with induction is we're transferring the energy directly to the pan. The pan becomes your your burner. It's uh, it's actually it's wow. a, in Florida we have a lot of um, it's going to give you. Um, so is that different equipment? Like, help me understand that because I'm not familiar with that. If you walked into our store and you saw an induction cooktop, it would look very much exactly like a, an electric cooktop. It'd be a piece of glass with elements set up like for the burners. Induction is a type of cooking that we've had available to us since the 1970s. Every cooking school has an induction burner. Every restaurant you go to, if you go to Outback, they have a, they have a burner in the back. They use it because it's an electric heating element that can do very delicate work. You can melt chocolate or cheese or butter without scorching it, and it's going to give you gas-like performance. You can go all the way up to high, all the way down to low, and it happens almost in real time. So this is sort of like a wok or some of those pans that would get plugged directly into the wall. Is that the concept? Uh, no, I mean, it's a built-in cooktop. It, it's, it's actually built into your granite countertops like any other uh, cooktop does. Mm-hmm. The, the only... Um, the only difference is, is that because it's using a magnetic outlet to, to create that heat, you need to have a pan that has a magnetic bottom. So since most of the pans and pots that are manufactured today, that would work. But certain things like cast iron or copper are not going to get that reaction. 
What this allows is someone that wants a performance like a gas cooktop to have that type of highs and lows without without the gas and without all the ambient heat coming into the kitchen. It's almost 100% heat transfer from the cooktop to the, the cooking surface, whereas gas, I think, is... 60 percent the rest of that just goes right into your kitchen and raises your temperature so my next question and what i really want to know is does that use less energy and i want to talk about energy star savings but we have to take a very quick break so when we come back in a second we're going to continue our conversation with regards to energy star appliances how much you might be able to save on some of those things as well as continue with induction cooking we'll be back in a minute You've heard this before. Interest rates are at all-time record lows. But if your interest rate is 4% or above, you owe it to yourself to call Silverton Mortgage Specialist. Silverton is a direct lender, and the best part about this is that the entire loan process is handled in-house. From application to close, we do it all in the same building, which means that our loans close fast and our clients know what's going on every step of the way. Our contact info is located on tampahometalk.com under radio show. What makes Silverton different? Products. We offer VA, FHA, USDA, and conventional loans pricing. Best rates with the lowest closing cost. Process everything in-house. It's handled right here and not outsourced to anyone that no one can reach. This way we can avoid surprises. Our people are simply the best, and we know you'll agree. What will closing Silverton Mortgage Specialist mean to you? A smooth process, real home loan value, and personal attention from real professionals. Silverton Mortgage Specialists are here to serve you. Visit TampaHomeTalk.com under Radio Show for all of our contact details. NMLS 109600 is an equal housing lender and Florida and Georgia residential mortgage licensee. Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. We have a fantastic show today. We are going to continue the last half here in studio with Felix Menendez. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell, here of Tampa Home Talk on the Real Estate Radio Network. We are talking about modern design trends, appliances, and some of those trendy things that we're seeing in the home. If you missed any part of today's show, you definitely are going to want to check it out in its entirety because we talked about a lot of those frequently asked questions, including stainless steel appliances. Are they going to stay? Are they going to go? Um, manufacturer brands and so much more so just check it out on tampahometalk.com we are also available via a podcast on tampa home talk and we're across the web on facebook and twitter just search for tampa home talk if you wanted to connect with felix menendez been with famous tape for 10 years a ton of incredible knowledge we have show specials here basically for our listeners so we're going to post all of his information on our website but our off-air number is 813-377-2775 again if you're trying to reach us here at tampa home talk you have questions you need some help buying or selling you want us to do a room by room review or you want to reach one of our guests call us or text us at our off-air number 813-377-2775 again 813-377-2775 so to continue where we left off we were talking about induction cooking and what that is and how it differs from the normal range talk is that are those energy saving appliances like do they use more or less how does that technology work induction is more of a, a performance uh, enhancer than it is a an energy enhancer I, it, cooktops aren't rated the same way that that things like washing machines and dishwashers are according to a, a an energy star guideline so because of that it's kind of tough to say that, that this cooktop will use less energy than the other uh, wall ovens are like that ranges are like that dryers are like that although they tell me that, that we're getting close to having uh, energy star ratings on dryers pretty soon so you'll be able to get a better idea now keep in mind that when you go into the store or our store or someone else's you're required by law to have that energy star tag on the product so you can see right in front of you how much this product is, is estimated to use over the course of the calendar year. So that can make, maybe can help you when making a decision on what, what product to buy. So if someone's had their appliances for at least 10 years in their home and they're going to purchase new appliances, is it pretty safe to say that a lot of stuff on the market now is going to be some energy savings for them? Because the government has strengthened the, um, the standards that these products are manufactured to each of the last, I mean, they do it every year. Um, we're, we, they're held to a higher standard. So if you have a, a, a top mount refrigerator with a freezer on top and a refrigerator in the bottom in your garage right now, and you've had it there for seven years and it breaks, 
almost anything that you come into that store to buy is going to be better because the energy requirements are much stronger. Um, it's going to cost if you if you do have a. We were talking about people that were coming in with um, with twenty five year old appliances and, and disappointed that that the product didn't last as long. But you know that twenty five year old range or refrigerator was using a lot of electricity. Right. And and due to current standards, I mean anything you buy at, at almost any price level is going to be a much less of an energy hog than than even things from four or five years ago. That's right. Even when you think of something like, for example, even cars, mm -hmm. they're much more energy efficient, whether you drive a big F-150 or whatever, they're making those automobiles and, and a lot of things a lot more energy efficient, just the pollution is a little bit less as far as what they emit into the air, just a number of things like that. So one of the things that I would love to talk about since we're still on kitchen is why doesn't my dishwasher clean? Like that's a okay. that's a regular conversation in our house, so I can't wait to hear the answer to that one. Well, that's a great transition just from what we were talking about um, just now about government standards. I think a big part of it is, again, this is a primarily a, a Tampa issue, St. Petersburg issue. Um, we have a lot of hard water, and unless you have a water softener, you're going to get a lot of scaling, a lot of calcium buildup on your on your. That's why sometimes when you wash dishes, you come they come back and they're cloudy. Uh, they have a white film over them, and that's not all the problem about. Four or five years ago, they decided that they were no longer going to put phosphate in any of the dishwasher detergent because of environmental concerns. So as a result of that, those phosphates were removed, and people immediately started calling the stores saying that there was a rash of dishwashers that weren't working, that they don't clean anymore. Um, you That's interesting that a product change mm -hmm. can lead people to think that something's wrong with their appliances and that, that it happens in droves. It, it happened. I mean, it was it was. A it was a pandemic of, of calls that we were getting and all at once. And because of the fact that once that soap started hitting the market and it was no longer had the phosphate in it, it was not, they were not getting the same cleaning performance. If you couple that with the fact that the water requirements have gotten much stricter than they were even five, 10 years ago, um, it's become a challenge for manufacturers to produce a dishwasher that does what the consumer wants but still falls under the guidelines of the federal government. So I'm curious, since you mentioned with regards to the dishwasher and the water, if you didn't have a water I'm going to answer your question about your dishwasher, how we can Yeah, I know we're not there yet, but sure. I didn't want to forget. And since you were on topic and I didn't even think about this, are there any dishwashers that have that little water softener that's specifically for your dishwasher? Maybe not in the whole house, but... There are um, there are several models that are available from from a couple different manufacturers that will have a water softener built in. Now these are usually very premium models. They're going to be among the top of the line dishwashers in the store, but they will have the uh, the water softener built in. If you don't have access to that, or you're not going to have a, a, a full home uh, water softener, there are things that you can buy, you know, at your grocery store that will that will give you that ability. Um, one things we tell people is is don't over soap the machine. Um, you, you know these little capsules that, that we're seeing now. You can get them at Sam's Club, and you can buy dozens of them at a pretty at a great price. You can get you're them talking at about the prepackaged mm -hmm. amounts that you put in the dishwasher. That has the that has the rinse aid already built into mm -hmm. it. Um, that's another thing you're going to want to keep your rinse aid, your uh, what we call jet dry or Cascade makes a Cascade complete. You want to make sure that 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 is um, filled up and that you have the dispenser. At the maximum level. Now, this if you're just list, if you're listening to this at home, um, the important part on this is if you don't have a water softener. If you have a water softener, this is not as critical. But if you don't have a water softener, make sure that your jet dry is dispensing at the maximum level. Keep that filled, and what that's going to do is create a sheeting action, so the water will not clump and, and attach to the dishes. It'll actually fall off and create a sheeting action, and that will make your glasses come out much much cleaner. The other thing you can do is there's a product called Lemmy Shine. Um, Let me shine is a, a form of uh, citric acid. You can get it at Publix. You can get it at Winn Dixie or any, any grocery store. Um, is it a detergent, like a dishwasher detergent? It's an additive that you put in your wash, and mm -hmm. by adding this to your dishwasher, it will clean out the lines and keep calcium from building up. And when the calcium builds up, the, the wash jets get smaller, less water is able to come in, so you're going to get a, a, a Poor wash. And what's that called again? It's called uh, Lemmy Shine. Lemmy Shine. Lemmy Shine. And you can get it at most um, grocery stores or um, big, big box retailers like a Target or someplace like that. Yeah, so you're saying, that, is it detergent, really, is what I'm hearing? You can, is you, that the simple way to explain it? Combination of, of detergent not being as effective, the, dish, the new dishwasher is not using as much water, and the fact that we're in a very hard water area. Um, a few years ago, General Electric did a, a survey to determine how much water and what type of water, and they measured the different levels of water hardness. Um, they did it in five regions. In New York City, they did it in Baltimore, California, different areas of the country. They also measured us. 
Our water was so hard, they had to add a sixth level to their hardness scale because they wanted to make sure their product would perform here. Interesting. So just be aware of that. You're drinking that. Well, it's, I just think, you know, if we were to wash our dishes and we hand wash everything in our house, even though we have a dishwasher, it's like used as this drying rack in my house. So I'm sure any dishwasher on the market would do better than what we have, but it's just interesting. It's the same water. So we're hand washing that with something like, like Dawn, right? That product. And then here you, if you use the dishwasher and you put Cascade, that's a little bit of a difference or? Well, the good news is, is that the, the older dishwashers are reacting to a change in the market, change of soap, change of circumstances, change of just various circumstances. The new dishwashers that are coming out now, they take that into account. They know that the soap is going to be different now. They know that the water requirements are going to be different. So how do we put more pressure on the dishes? How can we create more of a, of a cleaning action? How can we work within the system that they're that they're allowed to build in? So, so they tell ha- me, what, what's one of the coolest dishwashers you have with regards to the way it cleans? Well, we've got dishwashers that, that have um, triple filtered systems. They removed the idea of putting a, a, a hard food disposal in the dishwasher. There's some people that will tell you that's a that's a, a great benefit, and we do have some dishwashers that have hard food disposals in. Whether you have a disposal or whether you have a filter system, the important thing to remember is please don't pre-wash your dishes. Scrape off your dish, put it in the dishwasher, and let the machine do what it's going to do. If you don't get to it until tomorrow or if you won't run a dishwasher until it's completely full, that's okay. A lot of these have hot start, start uh, options. They have uh, sanitary cycles. The reason being is that the soaps, the, en- the enzyme in the soap needs something to react against. It needs to react against the grease and debris that's on your dishes. If you pre-rinse that, you take all that away, the soap has nothing to react to. It just flushes out early in the wash. So you're not getting a, a great wash. And, and why would you buy I think it's time a, to buy a new dishwasher. It makes sense to me. Well, if you've got a machine at home that uses 15 gallons, or you know, the new machines now are getting away with four or five gallons of wash, if you go, it can wash an entire load of dishes in four or five gallons versus you standing at the sink and burning 15 gallons while that, while that faucet runs. Um, take advantage. Let the machine do what it does. So uh, let's jump into laundry next since we're talking about water. How much have, uh, have washing machines changed over the years? And is there a huge difference in water usage from your front loaders to your top loaders? There's a big difference. I, I think that, that front load machines have been around since the 1940s, and it was really a, a, a preference by the American consumer to, to have a top load machine, so it became more popular. Having said that, you know, with the, an agitated top mounted washer's never been able to match the wash performance of a, of a front loader. They, they can't match the water consumption, they can't match the cleanability. And that's why. So front loaders will use less water, right? They will. Is that, okay. Dramatically less water. Okay. I mean, and for the most part, uh, um, I don't know any. Because your barrels have to fill, right? It, well, plastic germs. In, in order to get the clothes to wash, you have to fill that top load tub and force those clothes to be able to move down to the bottom. With a front loader, you're constantly turning the clothes. Water and soap are being injected through. It's much gentler on your clothes. Um, you know, at any given time, you could have two or three hundred dollars worth of clothes in your machine. And the way you really notice is on the front load dryer when you go and see that lint basket. And there's a little bit of lint in those front loaders versus a lot in your standard traditional. Top That's right. Loader. And all that lint is, is is parts of your clothes that have come loose during the, the wash cycle. So that makes sense. So it's, yeah. it's less... It's a lot gentler on clothes. Less rough. Yeah, gentler on your clothes. Having said that, a front loader is not for everybody. There's there's certain considerations to take into account on that. And some of these new high-efficiency top loaders are trying to replicate what those front load machines do. Um, and we're happy to educate you and spend more time talking to you when you come in and see us in the stores. So who would not, for example, who would a front loader not be a good match for? Front loader is not a good match for somebody that is, um, you know, sometimes you may have a, a passway or you may have accordion doors mm-hmm. that, that are in front of your laundry set and you may not be able to close them with some of these big front load machines that are out there now. Um, another consideration is um, there's some structural options. You may want to stack your laundry and you make, and if you have a, an area for a stack, obviously you have to put a top loader over a top loader. Right. Um, from an accessibility standpoint, um, it may be harder for somebody to get into into a top load machine versus a front loader. Um, that but, makes sense. But other than that, I mean, I think that the, the real consideration I think comes down to is, is price. And I think that a front loader, even the most basic one, is going to be a little more expensive than your basic top load washing machine. So... And if you can, if we had the opportunity to speak to you, we can we can show you some of the differences and see what works best for your situation. Do you have some good resources like online where people might be able to look or even give me something that we can post on our website? 
Well, I think our website does a good job. It, it carries, you can put in a partial listing of any model that you're looking for, and you can bring that model up and, and see the measurements, see the specifications, make sure that's going to fit with you. You can also see um, the energy guides. You can, if you're replacing something that's built in, like a cooktop or a wall oven, we've got a great resource on there right now that, that lets you um, put in your, your measurements for the wall oven you're looking for, and it will it will actually give spit out the results of what's going to fit that hole with a minimum amount of modification. Oh, that's awesome. Because it's not just awesome. the appliances. When you go in, you, gotta, you may have to modify cabinets you people don't think about yeah. that stuff i just showed a property last week to a buyer and the house was cute it really had been redone it was really nice but it was a and the kitchen had been redone too but it was just the refrigerator was too big for that spot and the air the space that you'd walk through was already narrow and they really should have had a counter depth fridge because it was just it made the space feel even smaller when you're walking through it, it does and you see that refrigerator sticking out five inches into the kitchen on brand new cabinets it's it's wow you know we could have maybe now some and that people doesn't even include the, the doors no so, I mean, I mean, you have your handles that you got to walk past also in those smaller little openings. It does give you a really clean look, and it looks like a built-in refrigerator. If you have a large family, though, you may you may find that you need more space. So it's it's kind of a style versus, versus um, get, needs. And getting back to the age of the house, that's going to have a mm-hmm. lot to do with the way it's laid out. So I guess you get into the chicken or the egg, like which one comes first. But you need to think about that regardless Absolutely. if you're redoing your kitchen. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. We have to take a very quick break. When we come back, I had to save the best for last. So we're going to get into outdoor kitchens and talk about some of the super fun things and designs and appliances that Famous Tate offers for your outdoor kitchen area and so much more. We'll be back in a minute. Aaron Davis here, owner of Hillsboro Title, serving all of Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. You're buying a house. Congratulations. So while you're worrying about the paperwork, leave the moving part to us. We're Woody and Sons Moving Company, a Florida licensed and insured mover, and we offer same-day written estimates. Plus, no sneaky mileage, stairs, or additional stop fees. All we ask is that you check out our great ratings on Google and Angie's List, then go to woodyandsons.com to learn more. Whether you need a full-service pack and move or some extra hands, at Woody and Sons Moving Company, we move you. Welcome back this afternoon to Tampa Home Talk, and I'm your host, Katrina Madewell, on the Real Estate Radio Network. Thanks so much for rejoining us for our show today. You can catch us here every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. We'll be here every day, same time, same place. If you miss any part of the show and really fascinated you, but you missed something great and you want to catch it out in its entirety, you can do that. Just hop on over to our website at tampahometalk.com. We are also across the web on Facebook, on Twitter at Tampa Home Talk, and every single one of our shows are available via a podcast. Our off-air number to connect myself or any of our guests is going to be 813-377-2775. Again, that off-air number where you can call us or text us at Tampa Home Talk is 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. Our guest today in studio is going to be Felix Menendez with Famous Tate, been there for 10 years. Crazy, amazing company. We're going to get into a little bit about their story before we wrap up the show today. But to continue with where we left off, outdoor kitchens and outdoor spaces. We're going to talk a little bit about that because you guys have a little bit of a footprint in that particular part of the market. But so let's let's talk for just a second why we think that's important. I, I think it kind of goes back to what we were discussing earlier in the show where less is more and people are really living um, much more within their means, which is fantastic for us because our show's mission is to help people keep and maintain great credit, live within their means and build wealth. And so we love to talk about that kind of stuff, especially here on the show, but outdoor spaces, we find that people love to entertain outside. They like to just enjoy those spaces a lot more than, than ever before. It's become a category that's a, a rapidly growing category. It's something that, that we, we started the company in 1954, and it was an appliance company. And we were, we were basically were an appliance discounter, locally owned, great products. But then in the 90s, we started to become more of a custom kitchen 
um, destination point. We brought in some different brands, and we we started to build a name for ourselves as a as a destination store where you could go and get um, built-in products, built-in refrigerators, um, oversized professional ranges, and things like that. In the last like maybe ten years, it's really been a, a a transition. We've we've started adding more and more outdoor products. Um, people are deciding or are discovering that that. I'll give you a great example. I've got a builder that I work with, and every time they send an order over to us, they they add on what they call a summer kitchen. And one day I'm meeting with them, and I mentioned, I said, that's really cute that you call your outdoor kitchen a summer kitchen. And they go, that's what, that's what you call it. I go, no, we live in Tampa. We don't have summer kitchens. We have just, it's just a kitchen. All year round kitchen. And you can grill. There's like a month of the year that you can't go outside and grill. And and so um, it's just made, it's just the way people think, and especially, you know, if you're, if you're not from Florida and you don't enjoy the great weather and, and that we have the lifestyle that we have here, um, you may not realize it. So having said that, I think for a lot of people, they've evolved beyond just having a grill and a cart and putting it by the pool. They're, they're looking to do something with entertaining. Um, to your point, people are staying home more and they're, they're entertaining. They're, they're being around people more. They're having family over and friends. And so the outdoor kitchen is a great opportunity to, to put the grill, refrigerator. Um, uh, so I would feel like I'd say we sell more homes right now based on lifestyle than probably any other reason. Think? I think so. Yeah. It has a lot to do with it. I think people either have children, they're ready to downsize, they're retiring, they want to be close to church, they want to be close to schools, they want different things that fit within their lifestyle. And I think that's why the outdoor kitchens have taken a big turn the way they have. But we see, I mean, I've seen people do elaborate $50,000 outdoor kitchens with, with marble countertops and, and all this masonry and a, uh, just a beautiful thing. But, I mean, you don't have to spend that. You can go and, and for three or $4,000, you can get something that's all-inclusive that will have the island. It'll have the tile countertop. It'll have uh, stainless access doors for your propane tank. It'll have an undercounter refrigerator. Um, and you can actually, you know, you can just have us deliver that all built. You pick the colors and, and you're ready That's to go. Ready to go. So there's one option. You can go all the way to the, to the end of the spectrum. Oh and, yeah. And, and there's some <laughs> great outdoor kitchen guys out there right now that are building some beautiful things. We've seen some of those, like they're literally have like a cabana. That's fire like a cooking area. All yeah. Kinds of things the I've indoor seen. fire pits. And have you seen the one with the glass that heats up? It's like a, a propane almost or a gas underneath and it's in the the glass actually heats up. It's beautiful. Like it's all over Pinterest. You can't Very cool. help but miss it. It's, and I think we they see a lot more of that stuff out west. In California, I've noticed a lot more things there than we have here. But certainly on some of the higher end things, we've seen them here. Well, when, when new trends tend to come into the appliance business, whether it's colors or styles, we tend to see them on the coasts or down south first, and yes. then they sort of migrate. And and it's like the whole California, New York, mm-hmm. Florida, Miami, yeah. And, and and you'll see like there's a couple of years ago we started seeing a lot of modern appliances, very sleek lines, small handles, digital displays, no knobs, and that became a big deal down in South Florida. And it never really quite made it here, which is more of a tra- traditional transitional market. Um, but there's some cool ideas out there, and we'd love to to work with you and, and make whatever your dream kitchen be what what you want it to be what could someone expect to spend for an outdoor kitchen like what's a range i know the sky is the limit of course but i, like. I think a good number is is an outdoor kitchen is ends up being usually a half or a third of what your indoor kitchen cost i think that that's a, a reasonable number and and uh so let's say regardless of what the size is or how old or how new or how mm-hmm. modern someone's kitchen is let's say they just they're hearing this part on tampa home talk and they go sure. wow i would love to make a great outdoor space and i want to come look into these outdoor kitchens what's the minimum someone could expect to spend for something like that oh i think you can come into our stores and, and pick out a great uh, all-inclusive product that again it would include the island it would have the countertops it would be the stainless access doors 32 inch stainless steel grill head um, an undercounter refrigerator and you're looking at something like 25.99 to 29.99 that's not bad and, and we deliver the thing and, uh, and we'll assemble it on on site Set it up. all you need to do is plug in your gas tank and you're ready so it's to go. ready to cook like you guys come deliver we're ready to have people over jump in the pool absolutely so talk about famous tate because they're pretty they've been around forever like this is a company that you know my grandparents listening would be familiar with where'd they get their start how old are they when did they start uh company started in 1954 and it was started by a by a gentleman named clarence tate and the company evolved from that from that that initial um appliance offerings that they had at the time it was purchased by our current ownership in the 70s were family owned 
Um, so really, the whole family's involved with the company. Really? Uh, yeah, they they uh, they really do. They our owner, uh, our owner, his wife, our two sons, they're all involved with the company at different levels. Um, we really at that point we started adding locations. We're in we're in North and South Tampa. We're in Brandon. Uh, we have a store in Oldsmar. We have two stores over in Polk County and Winter Haven and Lakeland, uh, Spring Hill. Um, you guys have a lot of stores. How many do you have now? Nine total stores. Our newest store is our Wesley Chapel location that just opened up last year, and they are just doing great. Where's that at? Because we have a couple stations here that uh, listen that are within our listening range. We have our Zephyr Hill Station and our Dade City Station. Uh, Wesley Chapel's over on Village Market Drive. They are on the uh, intersection of Bruceby Downs, and it's by Wiregrass, isn't it? In that area, it's not far. It's okay. not far, and we're in the. We're, it's a great little location. We're we're right next to an Ace Hardware. Um, that area is booming. It is, and that, that Toys R Us is down the street. That that they put a movie theater down there. It's a really great uh, area, and we've been very fortunate to be as successful in that market. Um, as quickly as we become there. We know Cypress Creek Town Center is coming in too, right there by the interstate. They're finally breaking ground on that project. It's been in the making for a while now. That has been going on forever. I remember those signs. I used to live in New Tampa, and that was I mean, that was five, seven years ago now. And that, well, they were supposed to launch at yeah. the same time as Wiregrass, if you remember. If, at, well, you know, you were you graduated from Lato, so you're from here, but you remember Brandon Mall, right? Sure. It was cow pastures back in the day, and that whole stretch of 60, it took them over 10 years just to get that done and actually bring it in from the time it was supposed to come in. It takes over 10 years to get up and down 60, so. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Oh, goodness. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. Excited to have our guest here felix menendez with famous Tay. he's been with them for 10 years he's got some amazing credentials he does a lot of volunteer work he is a chair for the tampa bay builders association also on the remodelers counselor and so much more so what else can you tell us about famous tate before we depart here today on tampa home talk just that there's a lot of different ways to, to get to know us. You can visit any of our nine Bay Area locations and, and speak to our very knowledgeable, well-trained sales staff. They will give you good advice and, and help you find the right product. We participate in a lot of home shows in the, around the area, both in the, at the convention center and over at the, at the fairgrounds. Um, so if you get an opportunity, we'd love to have you come by and, and say hello. And It's a great place to work, obviously, but it's also a great place to shop. And uh, I'd love to see as many. And if you, any of our viewers or listeners want to stop on by and say they heard about us on the program, we'd love to do something special for them. Yep, just listen to Tampa Home Talk because we've got a promo for you there on a four appliance package. So I know we have just a few more minutes here, and we covered a lot of ground. Like, we got through so much stuff fast today. But going back to the outdoor kitchens, it's just fascinating that someone can can pick up something like that in the neighborhood of a, a few thousand dollars. Well, and I think from your with your background with real estate, I mean, I, though, that's something that I think that adds value to your house. I think Absolutely. If, if you have three houses on the same block and they all look the same, which a lot of our neighborhoods do, similar colors, similar floor plans, you know, it's the guy that, that has the the extras. I think is going to win the guy with the garden tub or the guy with mm-hmm. the outdoor kitchen. Or um, so there's options there that really really speak to, to it's uh, funny buyers. that same um seller that i told you about i took uh-huh. to escrow this morning just to use them for example because their home's getting ready to close tomorrow that when i came in there and i did a first like a initial room by room review and we looked around one of the things they were considering was replacing the master bathroom like changing everything modernizing it and they did that it looked totally different everything else was totally redone it was their idea so i agreed with it because it was a great idea the other things too that i hadn't thought about and this is some things that we see as agents when we come in just to kind of when you've done so many other things things but the home maybe is not real new and want to spruce it up a little bit um we had them replace the inside doors to those raised panel doors like either the um two panel or, or the six panel whichever but just some type not the flat doors and that one had a beautiful little outdoor kitchen area what and that's what made me think about it not anything fancy but like the outdoor was slate had that nice little island bar that you're talking about with the stove and the burner and the sink. And it's just beautiful, beautiful little area with a little pond in the back, great yard, fence. Well, just keep in mind that if you're going to do that, and it, it's relatively easy to do, the, the important thing that you want to do is make sure that your ventilation is acceptable. If you're going to put that over a lanai, you need to have the... Um, if you're going to have a covered area or an enclosed area, you're going to need some kind of vent to get that smoke and grease out of there. If your outdoor kitchen is going to be near the pool, it's going to be out in the open air. You're going to cover your grill. Not not really a consideration, but there are there's more to it than just plopping down a grill and saying let's go to let's go. So get with the pros. Think and about we're happy it. To help out. Jump yeah. in. Yep. Felix Menendez here with Famous Tate. This is your host Katrina Madewell, host of Tampa Home Talk. Unfortunately, we are at the top of the hour, and we are going to have to bid thee farewell for this week. But you'll catch us here every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. If you want to catch us off air, eight one three. 
877-2775. You can call us or text us or simply just search for Tampa Home Talk. You'll find us everywhere across the web at Tampa Home Talk. For this week, we're out. It's a long, long way from home.